All right. Welcome to 80 days. This is either going to be a terrible idea at worst or a waste of time at best. So let's dive right in. So the premise of this game, it's based on uh, Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. Uh, you are playing as... I'm not going to attempt that because I'll mess it up. Oh god, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to say it at some point. I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, anyway, so basically you are the servant of this guy. Um, oh my god, what's his name? It'll tell me in a minute. Fog. Fog. Phileas Fog. And you are his valet as he attempts to go around the world in 80 days. And now I'm not reading any of this. Okay, um... Air Traveler set, Paris, Zurich, and Venice. That seems useful. So... Um... It's sort of a story-based adventure game. Uh, it's set in kind of a... well, you'll see in a second. Let's go to Paris on the Amphitrite Express. So like you can see here, it's got kind of a steampunk theme to it, which normally I hate, but I'll allow it in this case because I think this game is really great. We left aboard the 825 from Charing Cross as the final whistle shrieked its warning. Our journey had begun. So you can talk to people, try to get information. You want to you want to set up travel to get around the world as fast as possible, of course. Um, let's see. Let's ask about this place. Paris to Nice. I'm going to call it Nice because I'm sure that if I tried to pronounce it correctly, I would be wrong. Can I get to Venice from there? There's a regular private car service from Nice to Venice, but the journey is a tiring one. This is Jules Verne. So, what I like about this game is it's... Well, let's see what's going on here. The Amphitrite Express rattled along narrow gauge rails to Dover where its fins extended and it plunged directly into the channel. Monsieur Fogg made no remark as the dark water pressed against our windows. I thought it so marvelous at the time, but how many marvels was still to come? Suddenly, I, from the corridor, I heard a cry. So, the way the narrative is delivered, it's in these uh, text boxes, but then you get to sort of choose not exactly what happens. You more get to choose your character's interpretation. It's kind of set up like you are the author of this story, and the story is what it is, but you choose how your character reacts to things. So, let's see. I'm going to stay in my seat, because I know what happens here, and I, I'm going to ignore that storyline and look for something else this time. So, um, what I like about this game is that it, it really gets the feel of, like, sort of an adventure, like you never know what's going to happen. It reminds me a lot of uh, Sunless Sea, by Fail Better, the people who made uh, Fall in London, and also the board game Tales of the Arabian Nights. It's just like a really big kind of... I mean, you can see... I mean, it's Earth. You know Earth. It's big, and anything can happen, and you never know what's going to happen next. We splashed up onto the rails at Calais. I'm sure that's wrong. I'm going to be pronouncing every everything wrong. I'm just going to get that out of the way right now. Close the remaining miles to that. Oh God! See, this is why this was a mistake. To Paris quickly. This is one way of crossing water fog. Observe, but there are several ships which traverse the Mediterranean. Medi oh my God! Traverse the Mediterranean. Should we go in that direction? This is already a disaster. You're welcome. So as you travel around the world and interact with people explore, you'll find different routes, you'll hear rumors about train lines being built. So I have got, um, will it show me? I guess I have to get through this first. Uh, the Exposition Universal, that I believe is the World's Fair, sprawled over the grounds of the purpose-built Palais du Champ de Mars. Oh, this is 
embarrassing. Hot air balloons sailed gently across the sky, and the powdery light of the Yablokov candles gleamed invitingly. I'm sorry. Um, so if I remember correctly, well, I, I won't say exactly what happened. You you pick up on the story through the through the exposition from your character. Um, so obviously, as you can see, there was a siege of Paris. Um, I'll stay in my room. I stayed locked in my, up in my room until we departed Paris. It was only much later that I regretted I had not taken the chance to walk her wide avenues and breathe in her scents. I did not truly comprehend how long it would be before I saw my grand city again or how far I would travel in the meantime. So I can leave for Amsterdam right now, but I'm not going to do that because I have in my possessions here. Actually, I'll go to the market just in case. Um, I've got a wax cylinder here. Ooh, actually, you know what? This sells pretty well here. I guess I'll sell it. So you want to keep an eye on how much money you have. You start with 4,000 pounds. You can borrow more from banks, but uh, there are reasons to avoid it. It's I won't get into it. So I've got a lot of stuff here that will get me a lot of money if I go to Berlin. So let's see. Let's make this work. So different uh, pieces of clothing will give you different benefits. So I have the entire Englishman's wardrobe set which will get me, let's see if I can find any examples. I'm going to go to Berlin. Where is that? Up here. Oh, I should have gone to Amsterdam. Oh, well. Let's just look for some examples of what I'm talking about. No. Okay, here. So this one departs in three days, but I've got my complete Englishman's wardrobe. So, ooh, I could actually, if I wanted, I could get a ticket to leave tomorrow for no charge. Uh, but I want to get up to Berlin to sell that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just stay the night in a hotel. You really want to keep an eye on how much money you have because it you will run out very fast if you're not paying attention. So I personally, the way I tend to play is I, I'll see what I can find in stores and that'll kind of determine where I go. But there's more to it than that depending on what's going in the story. So this is just a... Traveling overnight will often be more efficient, where possible. We cannot travel where it is not possible, certainly. Alright, depart. So I'm going up to Amsterdam. So everything has different amounts of space, uh, different sort of qualities of the road. So this is going to be a slightly uncomfortable trip for my refined Master Fog, but he can deal with it. Um, there's different things. I think one of them should pop up in a sec. Different ways that you can uh, interact with things while you're on the road. Uh, like you can look at the news, which will sometimes give you like helpful information about the places that you're going or different routes that you can take. You can talk to people who are on the trip with you, get more information about where you're going, and then you can um, take care of your master, which will increase his health if it gets low. We found a member of the Coachmakers Guild to carry us to Amsterdam. She loaded the case onto the back, stoked the boiler, and took off at high speed along the coastal road, swerving around each corner with considerable skill, and I think some glee at our discomfort. I clung on tight. This would be a terrific ride. So let's see here. So this is how the conversing works. Oh, actually, I already did it with the Jules Verne, but... So let's see. Can you get to Berlin from Amsterdam? A private car, but the journey is a tiring one. That's all right. Um, personally, what I like to do is I just start throwing questions at people because knowing about routes is always useful. Was I going to Berlin? I think I was going to Berlin. Yeah. Once or twice, the metal rimmed wheels lifted the chassis clear from the road on one side, only to bump down after a chuff and puff more of the engine. We were jolted around. We were jolted around like so much poultry as the wind whipped through our hair. A ghastly state of affairs. I guess this this time around my guy's going to be kind of kind of stuffy. Why not? The Polish inventor Bozek, who had first attached a perfectly decent locomotive engine underneath a flimsy wooden crate, had a lot to answer for. I set about concocting ways to ease our suffering. A jacket stuffed under the behind, a shirt wrapped around the ears, jaw clenched, upper, stiff, upper lip stiff, and prayers muttered. So, when you see uh, options like this, I attended to Mr. Fogg. That'll, if his health is low, it'll genuinely 
uh, increase that as well as having other effects. So I'll speak to the driver see if I can get more information. I spoke to our driver about what lay ahead and learned that you could buy magnifying glasses in Munich that you can sell for a profit in Budapest. That is nice to know. Uh, where is Munich? Might not be worth going down there, but we'll see. So I'm going to explore, see if I can find any routes onward from here. Oh wait, I want to go to Berlin, what am I saying? Though the people of Amsterdam move about its canal side streets with a sense of optimism and good cheer, one look at their buildings tells another story. Perhaps 200 years ago this was the center of the world, but these days, the Zulu diamond fields have drawn away from the trade of Europe and the importance of Amsterdam is a little faded. I sympathize something. I took French lessons on Duolingo. I should be better than this. I, I'm, I think to say that I took French lessons is giving me way too much credit. France's own position had been precarious since the war with Prussia, which did not, to put it mildly, resolve in our favor. Would I walk along the sign one day, thinking back to our days of lost glory? I approached a street peddler for advice, who greeted me with a cheerful smile beneath a caterpillar-like mustache. What's the fastest way on from here? Car, I suppose. The roads are good. The canal used to be better, but now they seem almost out of date. He sighed. It is a curse to be rich in the past. By the time the future rolls around again, you are poor again. Maybe you'll be rich again sometime, I remarked, more from sheer optimism than any true conviction. The peddler reached into his pocket. Buy an apple? One pound? Sure, why not? I bought it and took it with a smile. What is the cheapest way out of the city, I asked. He mused, most, most likely the hydrofoil heading north to Norway. He shrugged. It is fine enough if you don't mind being jolted about. Is Norway worth visiting? I hear the Norwegians are moving underground. Who knows? They have a strange ways over there. There was, of course, the route following the canal south, in particular the route towards the Rhine, though I feared that to end up in Munich after nearly a week of travel would hardly please my hard-driving master. So many choices. All that remained was to choose how best to depart. All right, so let's see, what can I get here? Lost Rembrandt, oh my god, that is worth a lot in Munich. Let's see what we got here. Oh man, I wonder if I'll be able to get to Munich from Berlin, or if I should just head. Generally, not entirely, but generally you'll be going west to east. So I think what I'm going to do, let's see, can I... 620. Mm. Man, I really want to get, I really want to get that money. I'll, I'll sell this for now. I'll take these apples, move them around. It's very Resident Evil. You can, you, I mean, you can tell looking at this game that it's very Resident Evil. But okay, apparently Fog doesn't like Rembrandt, but whatever. I don't, I don't care what he thinks. Oh my god, I discovered a little... Oh, yeah, I forgot what I did. Yeah, so you can buy um, maps that will show you different uh, routes around the world. Uh, really useful to get information like that so you can plan ahead of time. With what remained of the day... So this is just a generic like end-of-day thing when you stay in a hotel. Um, this you can improve your relationship with Fog and uh, heal him up a bit. This you can... Sometimes get information, sometimes story stuff will happen. I went out to explore a little but found nothing of any great interest. Or that'll happen. Okay. Man, I really... Oh, wait. Oh, I can go from Berlin to Munich. Alright, so either, either of these routes is going to leave tomorrow. I think I'm going to... I think since it looks like I can get to a lot of places for Munich, I think I'm going to go to Berlin and then Munich the next day. So here we go. I've got my plan already. You can pass time with uh, clicking the clock up here. Although, oh, that's right. I cleaned out the market. My bad. Well, I may as well look. Okay, so I've got space for two suitcases on this trip, so that's good. Uh, if you go to the bank, you can get money out of there, but it will affect uh, what happens. I think there's a limit to how much you can get out of the bank, I'm not sure. Plus, it's time-consuming. You go to the bank, and uh, it takes time that day, and then you have to, depending on how much money you're withdrawing, you have to wait for a while. Personally, I think that you should never use the banks. I think it's not worth it. That's just me. 
I mean, honestly, though, the way this game works, like, even, even failure is still a story. Like, my first attempt at this game, I think it took me, like, 120 days to get back to London. I got kidnapped. I almost died. So that's still a story. As night fell, I spent a few hours walking around, and to my surprise, I came across a tired-looking English gentleman and his valet begging on the side of the road. I... I inquired into this misfortune. Maybe I'll learn something nice. They had been on a journey around the world and fallen victim to the high prices of tickets. My heart went out to them, of course, and I gave them... Okay, apparently nothing is not an option. All right, I'll give them 200 pounds. I tipped my hat and moved away. God, I'm a gentleman. All right, off to Berlin. So this is another thing that's useful about um, your clothes, is they can help out with different road conditions. So since I've got the gentleman's wardrobe, it's going to be a little bit less uncomfortable. That becomes, with stuff like open road, like this one, it's not a huge deal. I bounded in eager to get started. We hired the same driver as before. You two, she just get in. Um, let's check the news. Artificer Expedition rumored for North Pole. So the Artificers, it's a uh, global guild of people who uh, they'll come up more later, but basically they're the people who are responsible for all of the technological development that's going on right now. They're the ones who cursed us with the steampunk hell that we're living in. Um, oh god, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, later in the game, when you find, when you go to, if you're like going really far north, or if you're spending a lot of time on boats, or uh, crossing the desert, or the jungle, or whatever, um, your clothes will help you out a lot because stuff can get really, really uh, tough to go through terrain like that. We departed Amsterdam for Berlin. I begged Monsieur Fogg to allow me a turn at the wheel. He looked to our driver, who smiled and happily moved from one to one side. The wheel beneath my hands was like nothing I have ever experienced before. Such a responsibility, knowing the slightest sneeze could send us veering into a ditch. Oh God, we all know that feeling. Do you ever think about how when you're driving, like if you if you wanted to, this is going to sound morbid because it is, but if you wanted to you could just swerve the wheel and ruin so many lives but uh, you don't because you have uh, responsibility as Mr. Passport is learning here um, anyway not that I want to this is weird to think about the mechanism of the car was quickly grasped the first lever produced forward movement the sideways levers controlled our gearing and hence rate of power the wheel, of course, was to be turned rapidly at all times to release steam into the pistons. That's pretty funny. We made good time, though at the end of the day my palms were scorched and red hot. Now I know why drivers wear gloves. The sense of humor in this game does not come out very often, and it's pretty pretty quiet, but when it's funny, it will get such a slight smile out of me, I tell you. We made good progress in the car. Toot, my friends. Toot! See, that is absolutely kind of funny. Not that I'm criticizing. I like it. Finally, we came upon sight of tiled roofs, the harbor, and the smell of herring. We had arrived in Berlin. So it's pretty late, so I'm probably just going to have to go to a hotel immediately. Yeah. We'll pass the night here. We stayed for the night in the Hotel Adlon on Unter den Linden the main boulevard in the central mitt district I mean if I know I'm gonna get it wrong I may as well just that's such a an American attitude and I am the worst from the window the Brandenburg gate was lit by upturned gas lamps let's go for a stroll see if we can learn anything past groups of people drinking at low tables oh actually you know what hmm now, I already know where I'm, go I'm. I already know I'm going to Munich from here, so why bother? May as well explore. You never know. Berlin, they tell me, is once filled with the glorious sound of people speaking French. Not so anymore. It seemed so foul on the streets. We did not go out, but stayed in our lodging, consulting pamphlets on the railway networks of the world that were delivered to our room by a strange system of connected leather pulleys. I was more interested in the mechanism. I have found it is always worth understanding machines and not simply relying on them, and after a few hours, I had successfully taken one belt apart and put it back together again. 
Being a true gentleman, Monsieur Fogg evinced no similar curiosity. The afternoon turned to evening, and we finished our explorations of Berlin. Hey, so I got nothing out of that. Great. So I'm going to sell that wine. I don't need that anymore. Take the railway whistle. Why not? Khartoum. Where is Khartoum? So I have to leave for Munich tomorrow. Okay, well, let's take a look. See where Khartoum is. This is where it would be nice to uh, have some knowledge of geography, but I don't have that in my brain. I think it's somewhere here-ish. I'm probably so wrong. Oh man, that is out of the way. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Do I want a Caribbean timetable? Nah, that's not that, not that good. Okay, so to get to Munich, departs tomorrow, got room for three bags. Ah, what the heck, I got space. I may as well get this. It's always nice to have this kind of information, see what you can do. So if you see that, uh, that black route here, that is showing can't really see it here because it's nighttime in this side of the world. This is my uh, path last time I played. I believe I got back in... Oh, no, I didn't. I did. I never got back. But, you know, no spoilers. Things... Things happened. People change. There is... There are so many stories in this game. I don't even know how much there is. Ooh, here, okay. So, when it gives you the option to help clean, or stuff like that, you can get you can get money. So I got 110 pounds in tips. It's pretty, pretty solid. Alright, let's take this here Trevithick steam carriage down to Munich. And, uh, so this one departs, oh, before 6pm, okay. Some things depart at a specific time, in which case you've you may as well look around and see what you can learn about the about the paths, but in a situation like this where it leaves just before 6 p.m., it's nice to get going ahead of time. We crossed from Berlin to Munich in a patched-up steam carriage. The smoke pumped out of the back through a tall iron chimney, leaving a soot-smudged wake which trailed behind us like a flag. Our driver, Christoph, could not stop talking of his father, who was an engine driver and had just been promoted. Oh, God, I know that feeling. Um... The feeling of someone talking about something that you don't care about, the feeling of being an engine driver, or the feeling of getting promoted, you decide. The Kaiser has merged all the state railways into the Reich Railway, he told us proudly. We have the most efficient system in all of Europe. Hmm. What of the Orient Express, I asked. He grinned. It is good enough in Germany, but the line from Bucharest to Istanbul is in a terrible state, so my father says. Hmm. Do I want to avoid that? Where is that... Bucharest in Istanbul. Might want to try not to go down there then. Let's check the news. Munich importing telegraph lines. I don't know if that helps me at all. One man passing called out, you are English? So this, this stuff can be weird. Your character is from France and your master is from English and is from England. And uh, you can get if you choose, pretty snippy about the fact that you're French. Uh, but sometimes that kind of makes your master uncomfortable. Indeed we are. Pip Pip, he called back in a crude imitation of Monsieur Fogg's accent, and he and his fellows fell about laughing as we left them far behind. Oh my god, this guy is a jerk. How do I get out of the carriage and defend my master's honor? I shook my head with distaste. And Monsieur Fogg nodded very slightly. Oh yeah, this guy, he loves me now. And all I had to do was get him mocked by some random jerks. Alright, let's explore. There was little daylight in Munich. The sky was shrouded in steam and oil fumes from the tractors and hydraulic excavators in the streets. I quickly returned to the safety of a cafe, not wanting to become covered head to toe in soot. My poor jacket would not survive such an indignity. My god, I hate this guy. This guy that I am. Oh man, look at that money. 
for comparison, uh, the wager that I have going. I should actually see where this is. No, I don't think I'm going there. Uh, the wager that I have, or that uh, my master has, is for 20,000 pounds. So I am already making quite a profit. Oh man, I don't know where I'm going. I've got so many, so many possible routes. Routes, routes. I think I've said routes and routes in this video already. Let's see. I don't want to go to Bucharest. Do I want to go back to Warsaw? That's stupid. Uh, I've got some bad memories of passing through this area, though, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. How soon can I get to Warsaw? Oh, I can't. Oh, that's right. Okay, the red paths are the ones that I can actually go on. Alright, well, okay, I'll take a car to Vienna tomorrow. That'll work. As I have previously noted, the Franco-Prussian War has concluded but a year previously. Thus, my French accent was a disadvantage during our short time in Munich. The concierge of our hotel is most suspicious when I approach the desk. I was not immune to a certain bitterness, though I knew it to be futile. France had been defeated and the world had turned over once since. Still, in order to avoid any untowardness, I affected a Viennese accent for the duration of our stay. Monsieur Fogg inquired if I had developed a head cold, but otherwise refrained from comment as I rolled several consonants in the back of my throat as practice. My character is now dependable. I actually don't know if that affects anything at all. I'm pretty sure that that just, uh... I think that uh, the game just keeps track of the kind of decisions that your character makes, and it affects a sort of ranking type thing that you get at the end. For inexplicable reasons, there is no way to board the Orient Express at Munich, something strange to do with custom laws, though I had little interest in such matters since alternative transport was not e yeah. was not difficult to find. We ended up cramming ourselves into a steam-powered car instead and chuffing along. Let's converse. Where can I get from Vienna? Apparently I already know everywhere that I can go from Vienna. Zurich? No. Venice. Great. This guy doesn't like me. You can, um, you got, there's some items in the game, like these apples of interest, too. Okay. Can I look at my inventory? No. Well, anyway, certain items you can, uh, buy that will help you get people to like you, which will give them more, infor get you, them to give you more information. It was a pleasant enough ride, and our driver, driver, one Michael Hertz, regaled us with stories of his time on the Indian subcontinent. It seemed he had been employed to haul palanquins along the Grand Trunk Railroad connecting Kab Kabul and Agra. Before Agra wandered away, he finished cryptically. I demanded to know what he meant, but he merely grinned mysteriously and said, Ah, the tales I could tell. As we arrived, the driver put out his hand to shake. We will be driving on to Budapest soon if you want. Agra. I have to look into that. That is a story that I have not seen before. Ooh, it tells me right there. Where is that? Here I am. Alright, let's explore. Okay, I don't want to go to Venice, but thanks. I did not see a single flesh and blood soldier in Vienna, the city of music. My dear friends, the rumors are quite real. The Austro Hungarian Empire's might is built upon its armies of mechanical men. Their pewter faces are homogeneously handsome, though some have fine horsehair mustaches. I don't know why I said it like that attached to their upper lips and subtle variations in the flex of their eyes. I think I wanted to be a little French or British and say moustache, but some things are better left unsaid in a stupid, terrible, fake accent. As I watched, I was approached by a bookish fellow who hurried out from the, under the impressive eagle-arched portcullis of the the Imperial Armory. You think them fantastical, he demanded, a curious turn to his voice. I have seen automata before. Oh my god, I'm so bored. Paris had its fair share, after all. Not like these, the man replied. He stuck out his hand. Air Danzer. Air, hair, I don't know. Apprentice engineer in the Imperial... Um, nope. We went to a cafe to talk, and once he started, he would not stop. 
Have you noticed none of the mechanical soldiers carry weapons, he hissed? What did you make of that? It is most unusual, I agreed. Inside each one is a Mozart Hayden device perfectly tuned. The song the soldiers sing is one of devastation. A battalion in harmony can punch through a steel wall. Oh my god. Can I fight them? He drew a gilded flute from his scabbard and laid it on the table, looking at it thoughtfully. The automata understand music? No, no, he answered, uninterested in my line of thinking. They merely respond to musical pitch and tone. I cannot reproduce his entire explanation, for it rather stretched my German, but it seems the mechanical armies of Austria-Hungary are controlled by music. Will you be staying in the city tonight? Why do you ask? He glanced about him before replying. The army is preparing itself. Events are on the move here. If you stayed, you would see for yourself. Oh boy, do I... Is it worth seeing? I persisted. You are traveling, he replied. The army is traveling into Belgrade. And what of you? Will you ever leave Vienna? I dream of it, he confessed. As a boy, I longed to join the Artificers Guild. But for someone born in this country, it is impossible. The Kaiser and the Guild are sworn enemies. The guild, I reminded him, were politically neutral. He shook his head. The guild are forbidden within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Our automata are not guild-approved. They are our own. His mouth was a cold line. The guild would not countenance building such monsters. Thanking him for the coffee, I strolled back along the avenues, watching the city by, pass by with new eyes. Under its gilded and manicured beauty lurked something sharper and more bloodthirsty. Vienna was at once the city of music and the city of war. What can I do here? So I would really like to get to... Kabul. Let's see what we can do. Probably gonna need that. I... Whenever I see them, I always buy these engineer set items, but I honestly have no idea what they do. I've never found a use for them. And Talia, where is that? Down here. Mm. How much was it? Oh, it's open at 7 a.m. Alright, let's go to sleep. We found a room in the newly opened Hotel Imperial and a suite built for Duke Philip of Württemberg's maidservant. There was a delightful chamber group playing in the lobby, so once Monsieur Fogg was seen too, I took myself downstairs, settled down with a cognac, and enjoyed the gentle music. I'm not even sure that I'm pronouncing that right. After an hour or so, a group of men in fine dress came in and began making an unconscionable noise, unconscionable noise at the bar. I listened in on their banter. I could hardly help it and learned a most interesting thing. It seemed these men were local counselors who had been supervising a large movement of troops towards the train station, destined for Belgrade and then Istanbul. It had departed a few days earlier, and now was all but ready for war. My heart sank. These gentlemen were celebrating death and destruction, and toasted to the upcoming raising of the Ottoman Empire. I returned to Fog, doubt de, de, doubly determined to escape this beautiful, cruel city as soon as we could. Well, that seems as good a time as any to end this video. So, thank you for watching. I'm sorry for pronouncing every word wrong. And I'm sorry for thinking it was a good idea to do a video of me playing a game that is 90% reading. But you know what? I don't care, because this game is great. And hopefully, if nothing else, you will watch this video for maybe 30, 40 seconds. Stop watching, because you can't stand it. And then play 80 days. That's what I'm trying to get out of this. Play 80 days. Thanks. Bye.